What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands Top 10 video, and this time we're taking a look at the Top 10 Best Base Game Legendary Weapons in Borderlands 3. Since not everybody has all of the DLCs, this list details the very best weapons that you can get just by owning the base game. If you enjoy these types of videos, then please take a second to tap that subscribe button for more, and with that, let's get right into it. Number 10. Coming in number 10 is the Maggie. This Jacob's Pistol is one of my all-time favorite weapons from any of the Borderlands games. There's something very satisfying about pulling this gun out, hitting your crits, and just watching the bullets ricochet around. Still a strong weapon in Borderlands 3 after an accidental nerf a while back, this gun actually received a 77% weapon damage buff in October 2020 that brought it back up to power. This gun harkens back to the Wild West and six shooters, and with Westerns being one of my favorite genres of movie, it's absolutely no surprise that I fell in love with this gun way back on Borderlands 2. It remains one of the best pistols in Borderlands 3, and it's one of my all-time favorite all-around weapons to use. The Maggie drops from Turnkey Tim and Floodmore Basin on Eden 6. Number 9. Coming in at number 9 is the Reflux. Now, the Reflux is one of the most versatile weapons on this list, especially great for crowd control. The shotgun is locked to corrosive as its only element, but it does chain elemental bolts around, and each enemy can be affected by up to 5 bolts at once. And obviously, the more bolts of lightning that you get out into the crowd, the more damage. This makes the Reflux very strong for things like the Malawan takedown, and even in parts of the Guardian takedown, especially if you're stacking your elements with action skill and anointments. The Reflux drops from Genevieve, in the Voracious Canopy on Eden 6 when you're playing on Mayhem 6 and above. Number 8. Coming to number 8, the Sandhawk. This is one of the strongest sniper rifles in the game still yet. This gun is a lot like the SMG version of the same name from Borderlands 2, slow moving V pattern projectiles that deal crazy damage. This gun remains very strong and viable for all Vault Hunters. The only downside is the ammo consumption, but with a bottomless mags mose or a cut purse artifact, all the Vault Hunters can use this consistently. The Sandhawk drops from Kanagawa Jr. on the Atlas HQ map on Promethea when you're playing on Mayhem 6 and above. Number seven. Speaking of Mayhem 6 exclusives, we got the back burner coming in at number 7. One of the overall highest DPS weapons in the game, the back burner is also my least favorite weapon type, a rocket launcher. However, I recognize the power of this weapon and it is exceptional in the hands of any Vault Hunter. Basically, shoot this into a crowd of enemies and it does all the work for you. This launcher is also available in any element, making it a great choice for nearly any situation. Also, farming this and actually earning one for yourself is very satisfying, since this weapon only drops from the Agonizer 9000 when playing on Mayhem 6 and above. And did I mention that the drop rate was just about 7%? So if you're looking for a rare item that is actually worth farming for, give this thing a shot. Number 6. Coming in at number six, back into glory once again, the Kaosin. This gun used to be one of the best all around SMGs in Borderlands 3, but it got nerfed way back on June 11th of 2020. Well, Gearbox has fixed that mistake and buffed it back up in February of 2021, propelling it back up to being one of the best SMGs in the game. This thing has a high fire rate and it is still very accurate despite its nerf and accuracy not being reverted. The Kaosin is just so good because it does gun damage and each shot also applies a sticky that does splash damage. This is just one of the most fun all around weapons in the game in my opinion. It's great for a run and gun style, which really suits me. You can get the Kaosin from Captain Tron on Athenas on Mayhem 6 and above. Number five. Moving into the top five, and we're going to have a couple things here coming up that require absolutely no mayhem requirements, starting with number five, the Trevenator. One of my favorite guns in Borderlands 3, originally just because of the backstory of how this weapon got its name, but also because of how good it is after being buffed in November of 2020. The Trevenator draws its name from Trevor Eastman, a huge Borderlands fan who sadly lost his battle with cancer shortly after the release of Borderlands 3. Honoring a fallen Vault Hunter with a weapon named after them is already pretty awesome, but the fact that this weapon is so friggin good is just an added bonus in the hands of a splash damage mose this gun is beastly but it's great on all vault hunters since splash damage is so powerful in higher mayhem modes as well you can farm the trevenator from private beans on athenas after doing the invasion of privacy mission that you get from ava or it can also world drop and again no mayhem level requirements at all for this weapon number four at number four is the Face Puncher. Now, this is one that's actually better in higher Mayhem levels than it is on normal mode without Mayhem, but 
Even in normal mode, it's strong with the right gear. The Face Puncher is a shotgun that shoots melee damage, but it gains bonuses to gun damage and melee damage both. It also works in conjunction with several Guardian rank perks like Groundbreaker and Overkill to be extremely powerful. Combining this gun with a Cryo build means even more damage as frozen enemies will take 300% extra melee damage. The Face Puncher is known as one of the most OP pieces of gear in the game for all of these reasons. You can farm this gun from Moldock the Anointed on the Eden 6 map Floodmore Basin in the Fort Sunshine portion of the map. Number three. Sliding way up on this list after previously landing itself on my worst legendary items in Borderlands 3 list as the worst SMG in the game is the DNA. Well, a buff on January 14th of 2021 has skyrocketed this SMG to being one of the best all-around SMGs in the game. This Malawan weapon shoots two orbs that diverge in opposite directions and link together with an elemental beam. Each shot will be a different element of either cryo, shock, incendiary, or corrosive, but no matter which element hits, this thing seems to just shred enemies since this gun also does splash damage. Only outpaced in my opinion by the flipper, crit, and plasma coil, the DNA is absolutely worth trying out for yourself. This gun drops from General Tron on the Necrotefeo map Desolation's Edge when playing on Mayhem 6 and above. Number two. Coming in strong at number two is the Hellwalker, one of my absolute favorite weapons in Borderlands 3. This Jacob's shotgun is locked to fire damage and it just doesn't seem to care about that whatsoever. Shooting in the shape of a pentagram and featuring a one shot then reload traditional Jacob style, one would not expect this thing to lend itself to such insane damage, but a buff on September 3rd, 2020 boosted the weapon damage by 317%, launching this gun into everybody's must have list. Like I mentioned previously, despite this gun being locked in incendiary damage, it just obliterates everything. And it's one of the most satisfying weapons that I've ever used on any video game ever. Running up to an enemy, popping their head with one shot, reloading, spinning around, and destroying another enemy, it really feels like the super shotgun from Doom. You can farm this one from Road Dog on the Pandora map, the Splinterlands, or you can even get this thing as a world drop. No mayhem level required. Honorable mention. For my honorable mentions, I want to point out that literally any of these weapons could just as easily make this list with the right build. The Hellshock, the Lob, Krakatoa, Liuda, Smog, Boomsickle, Tig's Boom, Redline, Flacker, Tsunami, Sleeping Giant, and the Breath of the Dying, amongst many, many other powerful base game weapons. You'll notice that the crit does not make this list despite its massive buff recently, and that's because it's not a legendary item. <laughs> I get this a lot. But stay tuned for my top 10 unique items for more on that. Number one. Finally at number one, the Monarch, and anybody that's ever used this gun knows why. Switching this thing to bipod mode will cause you to be unable to jump or sprint, but in doing so, you become the God of Death. Featuring a high fire rate and a nice bullet spread, the Monarch is essentially an assault rifle shotgun, and you should use it exactly like that. Get right up in enemies' faces and just unleash absolute destruction. This AR can spawn in a times four or a times eight version, and honestly, the times four is great for most situations and most vault hunters. But a times eight on Flak and Moe's is so ridiculously good. This gun remains one of the most used, most coveted, and most enjoyable weapons in Borderlands. Lands 3. To farm one for yourself, go do the Kill Kilovolt quest for Moxie and Electricity on Promethea, and then farm Kilovolt, who has a 16.5% chance to drop this bad boy. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list of the best base game legendary weapons in Borderlands 3. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and be sure to let me know in the comment section down below what is your favorite base game legendary in Borderlands 3. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. I'm done. I retire. It's been fun playing Borderlands 3, but uh, apparently, apparently I'm done here. Take care.